Well, hello, good people. And we just got back from the UPS tour and we have something very exciting that just showed up. It actually might be my dream monitor. I'm really excited for this. I'm super excited. Mike, what do we got? So this is the XG438. We originally covered this at CES. It's actually pouring rain right now, so that's not a good thing. FreeSync 2 HDR 43 inch, 120 Hertz, 4K, not curved. So uh, let's get this thing inside before it pours rain on us and uh, see what's up. So we have the monitor set up. Michael, how are you liking it so far? There was a couple of challenges. It looks beautiful right now. We're just, of course, updating a couple things on Steam. Uh, Eber has an issue about where I have my PC. Yeah, guys, check this out. He has his printer on the right side and he's facing his back panel on the PC on the left side. Let me look at this. But what is the first thing that I want to see when I come into the room? My, P my PC or my printer? Oh, guys, come on. Like, this is insane. Anyways, let's check this monitor out. But first, a quick message from our sponsor. With long battery life, an NVIDIA MX 150 GPU and Intel Core i7 processor in a compact design, the Razer Blade Stealth 13 is a great companion for users on the go. If you want more gaming power, hook it up to the Core X eGPU with support for both AMD and NVIDIA GPUs. The Razer Blade Stealth plus the Core X the ultimate power couple. All right, guys, so I know that Mike mentioned the specs really quickly at the beginning of this video, but let's actually go over what we're dealing with because this ROG X G438Q is one of the craziest monitors we've ever seen so far. So it features a 43 inch flat, but not curved 120 Hertz, 10 bit 4K panel, which is almost the same size as a small TV. And that does cause some space limitations. Now, ASUS has also equipped this monitor with AMD's FreeSync 2 HDR and uh, Vasus HDR 600. Now, even though that this monitor covers 90% of the DCI-P3 color spectrum, which is the minimum for HDR 600, they decided to go with a VA panel instead of IPS. And for all that specs, you're looking at around $1,100 US, which makes this one of the most expensive FreeSync monitors around. So other than the size, the first thing that jumped out was the back. It's all about the ROG look, but entirely made up of plastic. But the stand is well designed with three legs instead of four, so it can be pushed super far back to your desk. And trust me guys, that's exactly what you'll wanna do. Just note that it doesn't support any height adjustment or pivoting and only a small amount of angle changes. Moving on to the connectors, they're actually hidden behind a removable panel that also acts as a cable routing channel. So pulling it back shows one DisplayPort 1.2, three HDMI 2.0 connectors, and two USB 3.0 ports, as well as a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. Oh, and there's also this little attachable projector that displays the ROG logo on your desk. It can be controlled and turned off in the menu, so no worries if you don't like that look. ASUS has also included a remote, but no batteries, guys. Yep, a $1,000 monitor with a remote and they couldn't include batteries. So with that out of the way, I'm gonna invite Mike over here to share his experience after using this monitor for more than a week. So it's it's been an amazing experience, and at the same time, I've found some very serious limitations. Mm. And those limitations have absolutely nothing to do with how powerful your GPU is, but rather its ability to accept input signals. So in order for me to show you that, we're gonna have to step over to the monitor. So let's get to it. This is the best possible image quality settings that you could probably have on this monitor. The reason for that is both the HDMI and the DisplayPort connectors have a limited bandwidth. So you can't really drive 4K 120 hertz at 10 bit color. You have to make some sacrifices somewhere. So right now we're at 60 hertz, 10 bit color and full RGB. But in order to actually bring it to 120 hertz, you have to go down to 8 bit. The amount of difference between 120 hertz, 10 bit and 8 bit isn't actually that much. So if you're gaming, this is totally acceptable. On the other hand, if you want 120 hertz but at 10 bit, there's where the problem comes in. You would actually have to do is select the 422 chromatic subsampling. What that ends up doing, it causes even bigger problems. All of the text now has this odd halo around it in, in a mauve or a purple. So I know some of you guys are gonna be asking why on a FreeSync 2 HDR monitor were you using the NVIDIA control panel? Now that was just because my personal system has the NVIDIA GPU in it right now. Mm -hmm. uh, we also used the AMD control panel and the settings are exactly the same. So 10-bit, yeah. 422, 422, everything else, 
you can set that there too. Now about FreeSync 2 HDR, personally, I think it's more of a marketing point than something that's gonna be worthwhile. Right now, there's very few games that support HDR. There's supposed to be more that are coming out, but personally, I don't see much of a difference in most games. In Mass Effect, absolutely. Mm. This, this monitor looks amazing. Now, there's another big burning question that a lot of people have had. Is the flat screen monitor or the curved monitor, curved monitor. better? And I'm gonna say, after using both, neither is better. Some people like the flat aspect of it. Some people like a curved aspect of something like the Predator X34. Yeah. Either way, there is no wrong answer. Yeah. I personally like the flat monitor better. Yeah. Speaking of panels, this is a VA panel and not an IPS displays. And I know that might throw some people off, especially for a thousand bucks, but to be honest, guys, uh, it was perfectly fine. I mean, just all you need to make sure is that you're at a proper distance and sitting, since you're sitting right in front of the display, it's really not a big deal. Uh, and if you think about this, like 4K at 120 Hertz, if you had IPS on top of that, it's gonna cost you at least two grand or a little more than a thousand dollars for sure. And uh, you know, the G-Sync Ultimate panels are definitely proof of that. I also wanna quickly talk about backlit bleed. I was barely able to notice anything with my naked eye. I had to crank up the ISO on my camera to actually properly see that. So it's really not a huge thing to consider or worry about. But one issue we both noticed is with the dynamic dimming feature, which is basically ASUS's version of local dimming. This is supposed to help improve contrast ratios, but with it enabled, there's a vertical halo around your cursor during darker scenes. Honestly, it was never really apparent in games, but Mike first noticed it when watching a movie. Like a lot of large format displays, this ROG monitor also includes a picture-in-picture -picture and picture-by-picture -picture setting. For productivity, this is definitely a plus, and I really have to appreciate that ASUS allows you to modify the second picture's location. Uh, lastly, if you do want a vase amount this monitor, that is an option. So with all of that being said, let's move on to some first-hand gaming impressions. Why don't we? I think we should, let's go. So I really like this monitor, but there's a couple of limitations. So let's get to the limitations first. Right now, I'm just way too close. I need to be another half arm length distance away. What that causes right now is I'm constantly, especially for me, I, I love strategy games and it's what I predominantly play. I'm constantly looking into the upper right hand corner to see my mini map and bottom left hand corner to see my special skills in, in Battlefleet Gothic 2, for example. One other thing that you're probably gonna see is something I've had an issue with too, is the fact that a lot of the UI doesn't scale well in the strategy games to 4K. Other than that, the sharpness is there, viewing angles are exactly what I would want, but one of the other issues that I've seen now is because I'm so close to the monitor, I'm actually getting some headaches and some of you guys on Twitter mentioned that I might burn my retinas out and you know what, it might actually be happening. So what I wanna know is what Eber thinks about all of this. So I'm in the hot seat sitting in front of the 43 inch monitor and guys, the one thing that I wanna just mention is just how sharp the image looks, especially on 43 inches. 4K looks absolutely gorgeous. I'm playing Overwatch right now. Bot match to be honest because I don't wanna get distracted while having this conversation with you guys. The next thing that I wanna talk about is color reproduction. And it's good, certainly not IPS level great, but honestly for FPS gaming, it's perfectly fine uh, as you're just you know shooting your enemy, it's perfectly just fine. View angles are also definitely respectable. It's like I said, for, for an average gamer, you're not gonna notice a huge impact uh, from uh, contrast shift and whatnot, it's just perfect. And lastly, I wanna talk about the refresh rate. 120 Hertz, first of all, you need the capable hardware to drive 4K at 120 hertz, but when you have that sorted, it's absolutely gorgeous. Just the response time is fast, it's, it's amazing. So I guess this ultimately comes down to two questions. One, is this your dream monitor? Not right now. The reason for that is I didn't properly prepare my space for it, so I couldn't fully enjoy it. I'm just too close to it, mm -hmm. and you really need to be aware of the spatial constraints before actually purchasing something like this for mm -hmm. your desk. Mm -hmm. The other thing is my perfect monitor from a size perspective is probably a 30 to 32 inch high refresh rate 4K monitor. I used to have a Samsung 305T, it was an, a legendary monitor, and I'm looking for something like that. Mm -hmm. And I'll be really honest with everybody, I don't like curved monitors. It's just a personal preference. If you mm -hmm. like curved monitors, that's that's great. But I guess I will ask you the same question. Is this a dream monitor for you? Not really, because I personally have a 32 inch 4K display and 43 inch 
It's a little bit too big for me. I would love to see a 4K display with that refresh rate with G-Sync IPS. That would be amazing, but I still... But if it's G-Sync, you're gonna be paying 2,000 bucks for it. Yeah, it's, it's gonna be expensive. Speaking of expensive, is this ROG monitor worth $1,100? I think it will be once AMD releases higher-end GPUs. Right now, it's a bleeding shame that you can't properly get that 120 hertz or 120 frames per second consistently from what AMD has yeah. on the market. At 4K. Exactly. Yeah. But in the grand scheme of things also, I think that the $1,100 is certainly worth it if you're looking for a large format, non-curved, 4K, high refresh rate gaming monitor. Yeah, and provided you actually have the space sorted out. Let, let us know what you guys think about the ROG XG438Q. I can't believe I actually remember it. I know. Yeah, that's amazing. So uh, would you actually consider picking this up considering the price and of course its trade-offs given that it has a VA panel? Love to know your thoughts. I'm Eber. I'm Mike. And we'll see you in the next one.